Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss and this is Code Club. In the last episode, we converted the dumbbell chart or barbell chart into a slope chart. Again, there's many problems with this visual, but one of the big problems is that it, we don't tell the audience what they're looking at. So in this episode, we're gonna use the labs function to go ahead and add some text annotation to the figure to add a title, to add an annotation, to play with the X and Y axis labels, to modify the title of our legend. Then we're gonna use the theme function to modify everything you'd ever wanna modify in the text of those different attributes that we're gonna modify. I have the code opened up that we created in the last episode where we converted that dumbbell chart to our slope chart. You can grab your very own copy of this code uh, by going down below in the description, you'll find a link to a blog post for today's episode. In there are instructions on how you can get the code as well as the data, as well as the final code product um, from the end of this episode. As you can see, I have the tidyverse and show text packages loaded. Um, from show text, I also have these font add Google functions as well as show text auto. This will allow us to add special fonts uh, so that we don't have to use the boring Arial font uh, in building our figures. We then go through and build out the data frame, we pivot it longer, and then we go ahead and make the slope chart. Let's go ahead and run this, make sure we have a good looking figure. Well, it might be a bit of an exaggeration to call this a good looking figure. It generated and looks the way we anticipated. So let's go ahead and now we will add the title and captions and start modifying the rest of the text that we see in this slope chart. I'm gonna go ahead and add some text to this. And so we can add text labels and titles and whatnot using the labs function. And so we can say title. And for now, I'm gonna put in title in all caps. And I just wanna give us a sense of where these different titles or labels appear in the figure. We can do subtitle, equals subtitle. Uh, we can do caption equals caption. And then we can do X equals X title and Y equals Y title. So again, hopefully you can see where all this placeholder text went to in this rendered figure. The tag naturally goes to the upper left corner. Um, where I might use this in science is to, um, you know, if each figure file I need to submit to a journal, I might say in the top left corner, figure one. Uh, some journals want you to have that kind of label, or you might, you know, if you've got four parts to a figure, you might put A in that upper left corner, and then the next one B, and then C and D. I don't use tag too much, and we'll probably ultimately be removing it from here. Uh, the title is the, the title of uh, the figure. Again, for papers, we generally don't put a title in here, but you know, if you think about it, most of the figures we present aren't in papers, they're in presentations. And so it'd be nice uh, to have a title for our figure, as well as a subtitle that's then below the title. The caption is right justified, and so it shows up in the bottom right corner. And then we have our X title and our Y title. One other title that we can modify actually is the title of our legend. I normally modify this in my scale color manual uh, function where I can then say name equals country and perhaps capitalized or normally more likely than not null to remove that name. So let me show you how we can actually do that because that's something that I actually just learned recently. So I could then say color equals, and I'll put in capital country. So that puts country um, capitalized now, right? So going from lowercase, which was the column name to being capitalized. So again, all of these different text elements, we can modify using the labs function. The one thing we can't modify by the labs function are the actual variable names on the x-axis or the y-axis. And that's because those are more data-centric uh, than uh, being data-independent. And so what we're talking about today is how to set and modify those elements of our figure that are text-based, but that aren't being driven by the data. Something that I often find is helpful is to set different labels to null. If I go ahead and say set the color to null, so that got rid of the title of my legend. Um, I think it's obvious that these are country names and so I don't really need to have um, a title for that legend. I also think it's obvious that my X title um, would be month, right? Because these are two months. So let's go ahead and set X equal null. Again, that got rid of the X axis title, cleaning things up a little bit. Let me show you something that I commonly see people uh, fall into as a mistake and that might be putting null within quotes. That then says that I want my title to be null. So null on its own without quotes will get rid of the title, but if you put null in quotes, then you will get null to be the title of that axis. One other thing that I sometimes see people do is they might set X to be a pair of double quotes. That then makes the title of the X axis to be a blank string. And as you can perhaps notice, 
there's now a bit of a gap between August and October and caption. And that's where that blank string is going. So again, if you don't want a title there, go ahead and use that null function. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And you can then see that there's no longer that gap between my two months and the caption. Again, I'm trying to create a slope plot version of that dumbbell chart that I created in the last episode. And that plot did not have a tag or a subtitle. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those by setting those values to null. Of course, the default value for subtitle and tag is null. So I really don't need those lines in here. And so again, I can say subtitle equals null. And to kind of show you what I mean, I can remove that tag line. And that got rid of the tag and also got rid of the subtitle. I'm of mixed opinions on whether or not to leave in null for things that are by default null. In one hand, it's nice because then it, you know, it makes it easier to know what the actual value is um, rather than using the default value. So, you know, I think for this plot, I'm gonna go ahead and put tag to null. And again, the plot looks the same. And we now have the placeholder text for everything that I wanna add to my figure. So of course, I don't want my title to be title and I don't want my caption to be caption. I wanna go ahead and put in the actual values, the actual string that we used in the previous episode. So if I come back over to the labs function that I had in my August, October, 2020 makeover.r script, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and plop that here in my code and I'll grab that title and put that in for title and I'll take this caption and I will put that in here for caption. So I'll go ahead and delete those lines that I copied over. And I now notice that I've got a variety of red X's in the left-hand margin that are a little bit disturbing. And um, I also notice that my text um, goes from the arguments being black to being green. And so this all tells me that something happened when I copied my text in. If I put my cursor over one of these X's, I see unexpected token quote, comma, tag equals null, x equals null, y equals quote. And so that tells me that perhaps something is off at the end of this line. And sure enough, um, I've got something underlined here with the red squiggles, and I see that I have two quote marks. I'll go ahead and remove that second quote mark. And now I see that all of that horrible red look goes away. So the title and caption came in, and well, they don't look good. <laughs> Things look like they are where they're supposed to be. So for my y-axis label, I'll go ahead and do percent willing to receive vaccine. So again, we now see that y-axis label. Now I wanna to turn to talking about how can we format the text using the theme function. So if we look at the help page for element text, we'll see the documentation on how to use that, this useful function. Element text is gonna be really handy for modifying the appearance of the different text attributes in our figure. We see that we can set the font family, the face, whether it's bold or italics or bold italics, the color, the size, the horizontal and vertical justification, the angle of the text, um, the line height, the color, uh, the margin, um, and that's pretty much it. So you'll notice that I said color twice. <laughs> Once is with British spelling of color and one is with American spelling of color. So we'll use the element text function as a function to assign to a attribute or an argument in the overall theme function. And so we can then say plot.title, and I can then say element text. And let's look, let's look at a couple different things that we might try. So we could try family equals serif, and I'll put that in quotes. We could say size equals 30, and we could then say color equals blue, and I could also say h just equals one. And so what this did was made a really big serif font in blue that is right justified on our plot. Um, this is obviously not what we want, but I wanted to show you a few different things that we could modify in element text to get this appearance. So what I do wanna use for my family is Patua one. Um, let's turn the size down to maybe 25. And I'm gonna remove the color equals blue as well as the horizontal justification equals one. So now our title is that nice, strong Patua One uh, font family. Uh, looks pretty nice. So one other thing to notice about the title is that it's actually left justified on the panel, the plotting panel, um, which is this Y axis position. I would rather be on the plot as a whole, kind of move it over um, a bit on the figure so that perhaps we can make 
have more real estate left to write horizontally, and we can then make our font bigger so the title looks even more striking. To do that, we can add another argument to the theme function using plot.title.position, and then we can say plot. So now we see the title is moved over to the left edge of the plotting window rather than the plotting panel. This now allows us to use a bigger font. <laughs> so let's go ahead, back in, and let's try size equals 28. And that then gives us a larger um, font and a more striking title. One other thing to notice in here is that in my title, I put a backslash N. And so if I remove that backslash N, I now see that my title uh, truncates that indent, but it's actually really running off the right side of that figure. That backslash N that I inserted after intent is a line break. And so that is what's called a meta character to indicate a line break. So again, if I would removed that and put that before the intent, you'll now see that I have a line break after vaccination. And so I would rather it be after intent because you know it's kind of like a hierarchy to the title, right? So if I say COVID-19 vaccination intent, um, and then <laughs> the punchline is decreasing globally. Kind of like having that line break there after the intent. The next thing I wanna talk about is the caption. And so you'll see what looks like HTML in the caption. And you're right, <laughs> that is HTML. And so let me go ahead for now and remove that HTML. And now what you see is you have the caption, but instead of not seeing the right side of the caption, um, like, the, like the title, right? When I removed that line break, the title ran off the right side. Here, the caption's running off the left side for some reason. And that's actually because the caption is right justified rather than left justified. You'll recall that when I put in that caption tag um, as a placeholder, it was justified at the right edge of the plotting window. We can again change that by using element text. So we can say plot.caption equals element text. And here what we want to use is h just equals zero. And so zero is left justified, one is right justified, and 0.5 is centered. And so now we see that that caption, instead of being right justified, is left justified. But again, the position is to the panel. So how do we get it to be positioned relative to the plot? Well, <laughs> yeah, we go back and we can use plot caption position. And we'll say plot. So now our caption is left justified to the plotting window, like our title is, and things look to be in place. What I'd like to now show you is how we can change the font face. And here again, we can come back up to our plot caption, and we could say face equals bold. And so that makes our font face bold. We could also say italic. And so now we have italicized font. You might recall from the makeover version that our caption actually had two lines. Well, we saw how we can make two lines using that line break, right? With the backslash N, we could put that in after countries and we'd have our two lines. But what we have going on here is a little bit different in that the first line is italicized and the second line is a normal font. How do we do that? Well, that gets a little bit more challenging, but really cool and really powerful. This is where the HTML comes in. So again, I can come up here into my caption equals and in the quotes, I can insert HTML tags. And so I can put in an anchor for italics. So I'll put that before the base. And then after the countries, I can do the forward slash I to then go ahead and uh, indicate where the italization should end. I can then also put in a BR, which is HTML for a line break. The other thing I need to do is remove the face equals italic from the plot caption. And now what I see is what we started with just a couple moments ago, where we have the HTML code joined to our text, which isn't exactly what I want. I want that HTML to be rendered. How do we do that? Well, again, it's really cool. Here in plot caption, we could use element markdown rather than element text. And all the arguments will be the same, except it will now, ggplot will now use markdown, which includes HTML to render the figure. But there's a hitch and that to use element markdown, we need to load the library ggtext. So I'll come way back up here to the top and I'll do library ggtext, make sure I've got that loaded. And now what I see is I've got this line break caused by that BR tag and I have italization of my uh, first line and my second line then is uh, a normal font. I could also make that second line bolded perhaps, right? So down here I could do B 
and add the tag and then add the tag to close it. And so now I've got an italicized first line and a bolded second line. The other thing that you perhaps noticed was that in the makeover version over here, the font is a gray, more subdued color, right? It kind of fades into the background a little bit more than all the other text. To do that, we of course could come into here in our element markdown, and we could do color equals uh, gray. So now we have that grayed uh, font. I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove those bold tags from the source ipsos because it doesn't make sense to bold something and then to kind of gray it out. So again, I can modify that by removing those HTML tags. Um, and it's really nice, again, to be able to use these HTML tags within our text to stylize uh, the appearance of the font. So you'll recall in our caption, we use this BR HTML tag to put the two lines on separate lines. But up here in the title, we used a backslash N. We could, of course, make that a BR to put in a line break. And then for our title, instead of element text, we could do element markdown. So now we see that we still have that line break. Again, in this case, it's there because we had the HTML BR tag and it's taking that whole title and wrapping it across two lines. One of the challenges with inserting line breaks like we did into the title where you know, we're trying to take that really long string and then manually snake it across our figure as a title is that if I change the size of the font or change my font or change the font face, then where that line break should go is gonna change. And so that's really kind of tedious to have to mess around with. Um, but if we're using element text or element markdown, that's really the only option. But <laughs> thankfully, ggText as a, as a package has another really useful function called element text box simple that will do that snaking for us. It also recognizes any kind of markdown attributes that we put into the title. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this line break and come down to element title and do element text box simple. We now see that we have our title automatically snaked across two lines of the figure. If I were to come back to my font and say make this 40, we now see that our title goes across four lines and that it automatically figured that out for me without me having to put in those line breaks. Of course, that's not what I want. Again, the element text box simple function recognizes markdown in HTML. So I can do some really cool things. So I could go ahead and put in a span tag around decreasing to make decreasing look red. So I could do span style equals uh, color and then in colon and then put in my hexadecimal. So FF0000 and close that out. And then after decreasing, close out the span. And so now I see decreasing is red. And if I wanted it to be blue, I could very easily you know, move those Fs uh, to the end of the hexadecimal and make it blue. Uh, again, I find it to be just really powerful to be able to insert HTML into my title or any of this text um, that we have. It's, it's just really empowering uh, to be able to kind of raise the styling just up many, many orders of magnitude. It's really cool. Of course, I don't need that in there. I'm just kind of showing off what's possible with this element text box simple. So I'll go ahead and remove that span for now. So two things stick out to me about the title that we can go ahead and modify with our theme function is that the lines seem a little bit more separated than they were with element markdown or element text. So let's go ahead and change the line height. And again, we can come back to um, element text box simple and I'll add line height. Let's, let's try one and see where we're at. So that's line height equals one. Uh, it does make it a bit more compact. Um, if I did line height, say 0.1, just go for the extreme. Uh, it's not gonna get those lines to overlap, but basically kind of removes any of the space between those two lines. And if I were to make line height two, then I have basically double spaced my title, which is not what I want. So I'm gonna go back to one, and I think that's got pretty good separation. So again, the line height argument allows you to adjust the height of the line. So if you have multiple lines for your title or for your caption or you know even your y-axis label, you can use line height equals something uh, to adjust the spacing between those two lines. There's one final thing I wanna take on today for this figure. And that again is looking at the title and noticing that the bottom of the G's and the Y basically touch the upper border of the plotting window, which you know eventually I'm probably gonna turn the background to be white uh, and so I won't see that so much, but of course this gives us another opportunity to talk about another argument 
in these element text, text box, and element text box simple, and element markdown um, functions. Again, all of these functions have basically the same arguments. I can give uh, argument margin and assign that the margin function. And so the arguments for margin are T, R, B, L. So think trouble, that's what it says in the documentation. And so it's top, right, bottom, left. I guess the way you're looking at it is top, right, bottom, left. Anyway, you can then put in a number next to that argument and it'll be that many points away from uh, the, what you're looking at. So I want to adjust that bottom margin. So I'll do B equals 10. And now we see we have more breathing room between the title and the top of that margin. Of course, we can do that with any of the titles or any of the text that we're modifying with our theme function. Again, I could come down to my plot caption. Again, element markdown, element text box simple, element text have all the same arguments in, for this application. And again, I could do margin and I could then do uh, margin T for the top margin and I'll say 10 there. That then gives a little bit of breathing room between the caption in the bottom and the rest of the plot. And giving it again, a fair amount of space. And I think this looks pretty attractive, at least for the text. We have a nice framework for our figure. Now the background, the colors, all that other stuff, that still needs some work. And we'll talk about that in another episode. But hopefully you can see from what we've done here is that all of the text that we see can be easily modified using the theme function using a few nice commands. So element text, element markdown, element text box simple, um, element text box. Um, so I, I use element text box simple more than element text box. I think element text box without the simple um, has a little bit more power to it, but sometimes that's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I like the defaults of element text box simple better than the defaults for element uh, text box. Anyway, go ahead and play with uh, these helper functions to the theme function. Know that you can find the titles and all the stuff that you wanna modify in the theme function, again, by going to the help, looking at the theme function, and look through the different arguments of the theme function. And anywhere that you'll see something uh, like plot title here, right? Plot subtitle, sub plot caption, plot tag, um, plot strip text, all of the things that use text, or where you see on the right um, that it uses the function element text, you now know how to use element text to modify that argument, that aspect of the figure, right? That here we have axis text, axis text x, y, x, x top, top bottom, left, right, right? You can modify all those using element text. And so now you're empowered to do that. So I really hope that you got something out of this. And if you did, wouldn't you please give me a thumbs up down below? I would love it if you took what we talked about today in modifying uh, text and the appearance and the theming of that text and apply it to your own figures. Let me know down below if you run into any problems or if there's any kind of styling to the text that you feel like I didn't quite cover or that you would like to see me do um, a little bit more in depth in another episode. And I'll, I'll be sure to add that. All right, keep practicing with all this and we'll see you for another episode of Code Club.